morning, and welcome to worship this morning. We light our candles today to remind us that there is a mysterious power, our presence, which connects us all. We call it God. That this mysterious presence dwells within each one of us, as it did in the person of Jesus, whom we call the Christ. And that we cannot be separated from this presence that is the spirit of love which created us and that is part of us always. Welcome, as I said, my name is Marion Laurie and I am minister here at Melville United Church in Fergus, Ontario. We gather in community today preparing this service for June the 27th, 2021, virtually because, of course, COVID-19 restrictions are still in place. Soon, hopefully, they'll be able to open up and have some in-person worship. Today marks my last weekly service at Melville after almost seven and a half years of ministry here. I have chosen this time to retire from active ministry and it is with mixed feelings that I prepare to leave this wonderful community of faith known as Melville United Church. Because this is my last service, I thought it a good idea to share with you some of my personal favorites. Favorite scriptures, favorite music, and a favorite reading as well. So I invite you, as I usually do, to uh, open your heart and mind as you watch and listen, and let spirit speak to you as it will. Um, announcements today, the only announcement I have is about summer services, which will continue over the summer online. Um, the Worship and Music Committee has arranged for some very competent people to provide leadership for you, so you need not miss any services at all. The hope is that by September, a new permanent minister might be in place or soon thereafter. So you're invited to join each week, the same as you do now online on YouTube. First, we begin with our acknowledgement. Our church resides on the traditional territories of the Attawandaran, the Wyandot, Mississauga, and Haudenosaunee First Nations. These are treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit in the Between the Lakes Treaty. They are also part of the Crown Grant to the Six Nations, the Haldeman Grant. Grateful for their stewardship of this land, we humbly seek to live together in pursuit of justice and right relations. Our call to worship today, we come with all our hopes and longings. We come to find rest for our souls. We come with all our disappointments and dreams. We come to gain strength for our lives. We come to worship together. And we're going to begin by making a joyful noise. We're going to begin with that particular song, Psalm 100 in Voices United. Is, you'll find it at 820. Make a joyful noise, Psalm 100. <laughs> Make a joyful noise on the earth. 
And today I have singers. It's wonderful. The uh, Worship and Music Committee is here uh, singing with me today, and it's so nice to have other voices. And Alan, the chair of our council, who will say a few words later. And of course, we have Suzanne, our uh, music animator, and Colleen Weaver, our organist. So that's marvelous. Makes it feel like a real service having people here. Anyway, I invite you to join me now in a moment of prayer. Let us join our hearts and minds together. God of all our longings, you are the fire that kindles our hearts with hope and possibility. You fill us with desire for life, and you hear our voices, whether we shout for joy or cry out with sorrow. We trust in you and give thanks for your presence in all the stages of our lives. Help us to be open to the movement of spirit in and around us. You know us better than we know ourselves, great mystery. You know our hurts and fears and discouragements. Forgive us when our actions and non-actions cause harm. Heal us when we give up hope and allow fear and shallow self-interest to dominate our lives. Help us when we lose sight of who we are and forgive us when we make enemies of those who have, you have given us to love. Amen. And our words of assurance today, listen, you are a beloved child of the universe. You are loved more than you can ever know. Take it to heart. Believe it and let your spirit dance. We give thanks to Holy Presence, the source of all that is. So we're going to pause the recording for a minute. Um, to make space for a pre-recorded song by Melville Virtual Choir, is my understanding, called The Eyes and Hands of Christ, written by Tom Kenzia. So, enjoy the music. Melville United Church thanks Reverend Marion Laurie for her years of service and spiritual support.
hope you enjoyed that music prepared especially for today. Thank you. So rather than one longer message today, I will share some of my favorite scripture readings, as I said, and offer a few thoughts on each as to why it is my favorite. The first one is portion of Psalm 139, reading verses 1 to 14. O oh God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh God, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take wings of the morning and settle at the furthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. And the night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. That I know very well. So ends our first reading. This first little reflection is called intimacy. I love this psalm because it reminds me that I am never alone. It reminds me that there is a creator, a loving presence from which I cannot be separated. It speaks to me of a presence that is with me through whatever may befall, a presence that is intimately involved in every aspect of my living. It is an intimacy that can be matched by nothing I may experience outwardly in this earthly life. I've often said, there is no place you can be where God is not. And that makes sense if you think of God as part of you. For me, God is the life force of all that is without which we the life force of all that is, without which we could not be. Without universal energy or presence, there is no universe. And if there is no universe, there is no earth. And if there's no earth, there's no life here. And if there's no life here, there is no us. It is as simple as that. Whether we know it or not, acknowledge it or not, or even think about it at all, there is no relationship as intimate as the one we have with the divine presence. It is as intimate as breathing and as necessary for life. We cannot be without it. So that is why this psalm is one of my favorites. And we're going to sing one of my favorite hymns now. One of the reasons I like this one is because it speaks of the intimate nature and presence of God. It is found in Voices United at 278. It's called In the Quiet Curve of Evening. Let's sing. In the rest between the phrases, 
in the cracks between the stars, in the gaps between the meaning, you are there. In the melting down of endings, in the cooling of the sun, in the solstice of beautiful. I love that. So my next scripture reading, another of my favorites, is Micah 6, verses 6 to 8, and this will be very familiar to many of you. What shall I bring when I come before Yahweh and bow down before God on high? Am I to come before God with burnt offerings, with year-old calves? Will God be placated by thousands of rams or tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my wrongdoings, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? Listen here, mortal. God has already made abundantly clear what good is and what is required of you, simply to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. So ends the second reading. And this little reflection is entitled Requirements. I like to keep things simple. And this scripture sums up very simply what is required to live a good life. Do justice. Treat people fairly. Speak out for those who can't speak for themselves. Voice your opposition to unfair practices. Do not seek to dominate others in any way, but rather seek to walk with people on their journey to discovering who they are as God's beloved. Remember, even to use the word help implies that you think you know better than someone else what, is they, what it is they need. Listening should come first when seeking to do justice. Love kindness. Care about people. Both people you know and people you don't know. Treat the stranger with the same regard and consideration you would treat a friend. And that includes strangers who look different, who worship differently, who speak a different language, who act differently, as well as those whom you might judge to be unworthy. In other words, be kind to every single person you meet, as Jesus did. Because everyone has a story. And underneath all externals, we share a common human story, the need to be loved and accepted for who we truly are. Walk humbly with your God. Knowing God starts with gratitude and awe. It starts with the realization that we really know nothing, that we really control nothing, and that there is a mysterious presence or power that undergirds all of the universe and that it flows through us. There aren't many things more effective at producing feelings of awe than to go out on a clear night and contemplate the stars. The universe is vast, so vast we cannot begin to comprehend its size or its wonders. The fact that we are here at all is awe-inspiring. 
Not to mention the thought that our puny little life here on this planet really does matter. It's truly humbling. So do the work. Take that humble journey inward to meet the real you, the God spark that connects you to all that is. Find the place in you where spirit dwells because it is there, within you, within everyone, no exceptions. So that's why the simple words of Micah are one of my favorite scripture passages. The third one, Romans chapter 8, verses 37 to 39. From the words of Paul, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. This little reflection is called, We Are Not Alone. In my Bible, the words, In Christ Jesus our Lord, are part of this reading. They're added on to the end. But I left them out because I want to be sure that everyone understands that the love of God is with us, with or without Jesus. Yes, God's love was experienced through him, but it is certainly not exclusive to him. The love of God has no boundaries, no requirements, no restrictions, and it certainly does not belong to any one person or any one group of people. The love of God is part of us, every one of us, We are born from it and will return to it. As I state at every single funeral or memorial service that I conduct, I say we cannot be separated from it. Paul knew it. The prophets knew it. Jesus knew it. Mohammed knew it. Buddha knew it. All the great mystics of every faith tradition knew it. We are all one as part of the great I am presence that has many names, but that cannot be contained in any one of them. Our human language is simply not adequate to express it. Our human minds cannot fully comprehend it, but our human hearts can feel it if we open ourselves and let it flow through us. We live in God's world in life, in death, in life beyond death. We are not alone. God is with us. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to sing one of my favorite hymns, which is not in Voices United, but I'm sure many of you know the words off by heart, because I do, and it's called In the Garden. And so we're going to sing it now with the organ this time. And the 
It's so nice to have the organ back for the last three weeks. It's been under um, cleaning. Uh, once in a 25 or 30 year cleaning, they take all the pipes down that are in the back of here, clean them all, put them all back, and it just it sounds so much better, and it's so nice to have it back again. Anyways, words from Alan Hans, our tariff council. Alan has a few things he wants to say for some reason. Thank you, Mary. And it doesn't matter what technology I'm using, I'm always too tall for it. <laughs> Just going me a, a little bit here. <laughs> Just, Just back up. Oh. Did you turn it on? We have a red light. What are the chances, eh? It's not retirement. It's not turning here. Just use this one. Thank you very much. Well, yes, I was just saying, it doesn't matter what technology I'm using, I'm always too tall for it. So I'm going to kneel a little bit here while we go through with a little statement on behalf of the Church for Marion, but certainly on behalf of the congregation and church council, I wish to say a big thank you to Reverend Laurie. For the past seven years, you have provided faithful service to this flock of ours here at Melville. Now, I don't know if you'd remember, but your first Sunday with us, you actually did two baptisms, and one of them was for my youngest, Emma. And ever since, you have very patiently endured her antics during kids' time, as well as being a secret uh, pen pal for her and big sister, Grace. And I, in turn, have enjoyed getting to know your grandchildren as a secret pen pal as well, and host for PD day camps. So I don't think it has to be said. Certainly, you, Marion, and your family are always welcome here at Melville. So over the past seven years, you've, we've relied rather on your knowledge and passion to guide us as we first consolidated around your leadership, and then moved forward as we started to discern a process to review who we are and how we're going to grow into the future. In particular, over the past year, you have pushed us to be better and to look beyond our own walls towards the wider community and how we can be of service there. So from the social justice group to your suggestion for a new full-time minister, we, feel your, we will feel your impact, rather, for years to come. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you, Reverend Lori. May your retirement be everything you wish it to be. Thank you so much, Alan, for those kind, kind words. And I would be remiss if I were not to include some parting words today, too. As uh, Alan said, I started my ministry here at Melville almost seven and a half years ago, February of 2014. It's been a wonderful experience all the way around. We've seen a few changes during that time, as Alan kind of alluded to, one of them being a change in music leadership and another being a change in youth and kids' church leadership, along with some other things. But through it all, Melville people kept looking and moving forward. I have experienced Melville folks as faithful, caring, supportive, hardworking, involved, fun, dedicated, 
accepting, collaborative, talented, in many, many ways, and so much more. This past year of COVID has been a challenge, but many came forward to do what was necessary to get us online and to stay connected. Many thanks to the phoning team. And procedures were implemented to keep people safe when we were allowed to open for a few weeks in the fall. The Church Council has worked hard to not only keep in touch with people, but to work faithfully toward the future by exploring different ways to be church in this community. So as I leave you to ride off into the sunset, as they say, to enjoy some downtime, I feel confident that Melville is in good hands and is on the verge of becoming so much more than declining membership numbers would indicate. Don't fear the future. Embrace it and go forth boldly, letting spirit lead you. Thank you all so very much for allowing me to minister with and among you. It has been a pleasure. Now I want to leave you with another of my favorite readings. It sums up much of what I have said over the years, not only today, and, uh, but all my years in ministry, and offers wonderful advice to live by. Some of you will be familiar with it. It's called the desiderata. That word, by the way, means things wanted or needed. And it was written by Max Ehrman in 1927. Go placidly amid the noise and the haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others. Even to the dull and ignorant, they too have their story. Avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexations to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater or lesser persons than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery but let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself. Especially do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune, but do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive God to be. And whatever your labors and aspirations, in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace in your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. Let us pray. God of all our longings, you are the fire that kindles our hearts with hope and possibility. You fill us with desire for life and you hear our voices whether we shout for joy or cry out with sorrow. We trust in you and give thanks for your presence in all the stages of our lives. We pray today for healing in the many places in the world that is needed places of war and upheaval, places of natural disaster, places of disease and famine, places of environmental degradation, places of oppression and domination. 
all places where your love has been forgotten or scorned. We pray today for Indigenous peoples everywhere as they struggle to reassert their, their right to live according to their own beliefs without discrimination. We pray today for those of different sexual orientations that they may find acceptance and freedom from harassment. We pray for all people of color who live with racial profiling and prejudice that they may find equality. We pray today for our brothers and sisters of Holland Center Pastoral Charge and for all those who work on our behalf to bring your love to other parts of our country and the world. And we pray for ourselves as we open our hearts and minds to share our concerns, our joys, and our thanksgivings. Hear our individual prayers. We pray for this community of faith called Melville United Church as they seek to do your work here in Central Wellington. May they be a beacon of your light to all around. We offer these and all of our prayers in the name of our brother Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And as always, every week I offer you the opportunity to share your monetary gifts with Melville United. And there's a number of ways that you can do that. You can send a check by mail. You can drop it into the mail slot on the parking lot, beside the parking lot door. You can donate online through Canada Helps. Just look up Melville United Fergus. You can call Linda, the secretary at the office, to arrange for pre-authorized remittance payments. And you can e-transfer directly from your bank account to the church's account by using the email secretary at Melville United. Dot com. So let us offer a short prayer for those who do give and for you, even in watching. Loving God, accept all of the gifts we bring, money, time, talent. May they be a symbol of our desire and commitment to play our part in your unfolding story of love. Amen. Well, we have a closing hymn. Where is the, oh, that's after that. God be with you till we meet again. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but after, before I left for every vacation, I always had this hymn. <laughs> every time. Well, I did it here and I did it at Alma too. I always have, because it just, it's a good one. God be with you till we meet again. It's in Voices United at 422. So let's see.
good thing we have singers today because I was a bit high. <laughs> my goodness, look at you. <laughs> Do you want a microphone? Uh, yes. Can you get that one working? <laughs> Alan's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alan. <laughs> Marion, it is uh, my pleasure to present you with this bouquet of flowers for you to take and enjoy, mm -hmm. and to thank you for your ministry with us for the last seven and a half years. It has been lovely, and it has been a pleasure for, for Melville, and I know the last year and a half, uh, you probably didn't expect a pandemic to <laughs> no. come. <laughs> But anyway, we thank you uh, for your leadership during that time because um, you certainly had to find a way to do ministry in a different way. And we thank you very much. We thank you sincerely for that because um, you just took up the slack and just continue to lead us on our way. So we appreciate that very, very much. May God bless you in your retirement. And we'll be thinking of you often. Thank you. Thank you so much. Look at that. That's absolutely gorgeous. You, oh, you can see it good up on the screen. Thanks, Rossi. Beautiful. Thank you. They do. Wow. Who would have thought? Let's put them there for a second. We're going to hear a musical treat now. Another gift for me. <laughs> As uh, organ and piano are going to play together, may the good Lord bless and keep you. So we have Colleen Weber on the organ and Suzanne Flewelling on the piano. So let's hear this wonderful music.
beautiful. Thank you so much. So let us go from here to serve the world God loves with hearts full of tenderness and joy and minds full of eagerness and hope. And may the blessing of God who both goes with us and meets us on the way surround each one of you this day and always. Amen. Now I have a parting wish for you, and of course it has to be musical. So I'm just going to move this over a little bit. I hope you didn't mind the moving around, but I wanted to get um, both Suzanne and Colleen in the picture. So I'll move it over here. So I'm near this microphone. I've got to hold this microphone. <laughs> All right, we'll see if we can get this right. Maybe I should use the one with the music. Hold on. <laughs> Bless everybody.